Hello, I'm Oscar Archibald, and welcome to Screen Plus. Over 100 years ago, the first great horror feature was released. Nosferatu, a symphony in horror, is directed by F.W. Murnau. This unauthorised and unofficial adaptation of Bram Stoker's novel Dracula made significant changes to the source material, renaming Dracula to Count Orlok and setting the mainland section in Germany. While these were often used as proof of difference in the copyright scenarios, the opening title still mentioned the fact that the film was based on Stoker's book. Stoker's estate ended up suing and ordered every print of the German Expressionist film to be destroyed, but luckily a chance few prints managed to survive and we even have a full HD remaster to marvel over, with translated and updated title cards to remain as high quality as possible. Prana Films, who declared bankruptcy after this release, their only film, decided that their co-founder Albin Grau would shoot a vampire picture based on Dracula, after a war story he heard from a Serbian farmer that his father was in fact undead. He gave Henrik Kielin the task of writing the screenplay, despite the fact Piranha Films hadn't actually obtained the rights to Dracula. Kielin was already an established screenwriter in dark romanticism, having penned films such as The Student of Prague. It was his idea to make changes such as setting the film in Germany and cutting the Van Helsing character entirely. His screenplay was described as full of poetry and full of rhythm, which comes across in the finished film. Filming started in 1921, with Transylvania being filmed in northern Slovakia. Due to cost reasons, there was only one camera, therefore only one film negative. This was because in those days, it was just down to whatever the cameraman personally owned, and Fritz Arno Wagner only had one. Director Murnau paid very close attention to Galeen's script, but for some reason he didn't receive the full text. This led to the director rewriting 12 pages himself, including the entire ending. Murnau was a very precise director, even directing his actress to a metronome in order to get the beats right. The original score was composed by Hans Erdmann and was performed live with the film at the Berlin premiere. Now, the majority of the score is lost, and what remains is only partial. It being a silent film, there is a long musical history attached to this work. Many composers have put together their own works, such as Hammer Horror composer James Bernard in the 90s, along with a recomposed score from the partial original by Gillian Anderson and James Kessler. Bristol-based group Minima toured with the film today, and in 2023 there was a premiere of an entirely new score based on the original by the Louisville Orchestra. There's been a long-standing tradition of combining modern music with the 20s gothic imagery. This was stressed by the Dutch composer Josef van Wissem and his 2022 score, and there have been many links with the films to Radiohead's Kid A album. The Screen Plaza version, curated by me, stands as a combination of the two styles, taking the classical music of Shostakovich and Liberetti, and combining it with the contemporary music of the Talking Heads, Radiohead and David Bowie, just to name a few. Nosferatu seemed to confuse audiences at the time, but brought great appeal to Murnau. Some people thought the beauty and the clarity of the image didn't match the horror theme. One critic thought that the vampire appeared too corporeal and brightly lit to appear actually scary. However, the gorgeous nature imagery has received its plaudits in recent times as it deserves. The Vatican in 1995 placed the film on its list of 45 important films and ranked 25th on Empire Magazine's 100 Best Films of World Cinema. Legendary film critic Roger Ebert said, Nosferatu remains effective. It doesn't scare us, but it haunts us. Over the years, the original film has been criticised somewhat for potential links to anti-Semitism. The film being a product of the German 20s, certain aspects of Nosferatu's appearances, along with undertones of what he brings to Germany, have been presented with ideas of otherness and fear among German people. The reason I elected not to alter, edit out, or just not adapt this altogether was 1. Film preservation. This is a great film and the politics of the time shouldn't be held against it. 2. These themes are present in the novel, which have no links to 20s Germany. The Plague subplot, for example, remains and just is set in London, which removes the Jew fearing undertones of the German 20s. The decision to move the film to London was an aid of relating an early film audience to the terror who may not relate to an English setting. Having taken a look at the film, I believe the subtext is more greatly taken from the people of the time than is directly implied uh, by the film itself, and for that reason I have not made any changes uh, to the original film, meaning it appears exactly how it would have appeared in 1922. Despite these issues, the film remains culturally significant as ever. 
Robert Eggers' next film, releasing in 2024, stars Lily Rose Depp and Bill Skarsgård in the main roles. The music video for Under Pressure contains imagery from this very film. Obviously, without access to the original print and high-class editing software, I have not been fully able to upgrade the film to true 4K. However, it will be streaming in a kind of uplist that should increase clarity somewhat. It also has been put into HDR, which means you are getting the best representation of the colours that is absolutely possible by modern technology. The film will be presented on Screen Plaza in full surround sound, allowing you to hear in the best quality every detail of the new soundtrack, regardless of your setup. The film releases on the 15th of December 2023, and will be up for all to enjoy in the highest quality possible. I hope you enjoy this great film, I hope you enjoy the soundtrack I have given to it, and mostly I just hope you get to experience this in a new way never seen before.